Good morning. Today we're going to uh, derive the formula for the derivative of the arc secant function and arc secant of x. And uh, if uh, the range, if we say y equals the arc secant of x or the inverse secant of x, then that necessarily say, says that y lies in the range of the arc secant function, which is uh, between 0 and pi, but y cannot equal pi over 2. Uh, so that's true, so therefore I can say secant of y equals x. Now I can uh, derive uh, with respect to x on both sides of the equation using implicit differentiation. So we have uh, the derivative of the secant of y with respect to x is the secant of y times the tangent of y times y prime equals the derivative of x with respect to x is just 1. So now we can solve for y prime and we get 1 over the secant of y times the tangent of y. So now we want to get it in terms of x. Well the secant of y equals x uh, based on these conditions. We know that that's true. So we can say y prime equals 1 minus x times the tangent of y. And uh, the tangent of y, if uh, y, this is kind of a tricky part, if y is between 0 and pi over 2, if it's uh, greater than or equal to 0 and less than pi over 2, uh, then the uh, tangent of y equals the square root of the secant squared of y minus 1. And that, of course, equals, based on this, that the secant of y equals uh, x, that equals x, the square root of x squared minus 1. Um, and uh, x is positive, oops, uh, that is, i.e., x is greater than 0. Okay, but now we look if uh, y is uh, greater than pi over 2, but less than or equal to pi, then the tangent of y equals negative uh, x squared minus 1, and x is negative, i.e., that is, um, x is less than 0. So basically what's going to happen here is we're going to get something in the form of y equals 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Um, when uh, y is between 0 and pi over 2, then uh, tangent of y equals square root of x squared minus 1 and x is positive. x is greater than 0. So we actually get this derivative. Um, when y is between pi over 2 or greater than pi over 2 and less than or equal to pi, then the tangent of y is negative square, square root of x squared minus 1, and x is negative. Uh, therefore, when this is a negative and this is a negative, when this value in this x is a negative and this value is a negative, then we'll actually still come up with, a, with an expression where this, this is a positive. We'll still get the same value. So we actually, we don't want to have to write two separate derivative formulas for one, um, for one function when we don't have to. And basically what this says, x is positive, the value of x is positive when x is uh, greater than 0 and y is positive. This says that um, when x is less than 0, meaning it's negative, then the tangent of y is negative. So we have a negative times a negative equals a positive. So what we want is we want this x to always be positive. Well, if you'll remember, the absolute value of x equals negative x 
if x is less than zero, which is what we would have here. We would have y prime equals one over negative x times the square root of x squared minus one, and it equals x if x is greater than zero, which is what we would have in this in this instance. We would have, and what I've actually written right here, we'd have x times uh, the square root of x squared minus one. So therefore, I can actually, in order to not have to write the the formula for the derivative of the arc secant of x as a piecewise defined formula, I guess you would call it, uh, two different formulas depending on where where y was. Um, I can just write it as y prime equals one over the square root, I mean the, the absolute value of x times the square root of x squared minus one. And it's because of the of this nature, because we we would get a positive here when we plug in values, and we get a positive there when we plug in values, and then the squared, x squared, regardless if x is positive or negative, we're still we're not gonna have a problem uh, in our range. Uh, or our domain rather of x and um, by the way just just to kind of add in case you don't know I didn't really put this but um, x is between uh, is in the set of uh, negative infinity to uh, negative 1 union 1 to positive infinity um, that's true. It, that, that's actually part of the range of the domain. That's the domain of the arc secant function. You should pretty much know that. I, sorry, I didn't mention that earlier. But anyway, uh, I think I did a pretty good job of that. Uh, but I might try again.